Obviously, I um, got a great night for our program, and you know, one that we've worked really hard to make happen. So. I haven't been emotional to this very point. Of course, right when I get in front of you guys, I'm going to get emotional. But I think that the, the emotions are <clears throat> a testament to the level of care, the level of investment um, from so many people that are cheering for us. To start with our chancellor, who, you know, again, I said this from the jump, but you know, none of this would be possible without his belief in what we're doing and God, his willingness to reimagine what this program can be and, and open up resources and push, obviously to the best partner that I could ever ask for in Candace Lee. Uh, she's a great boss, a great friend, a great mentor. And Few people know the level of fight like she understands the level of fight. And again, I wouldn't be here without her from the interview till now. And her support, her belief, her willingness to set a path and open up a path for me to do the things I need to do to get this program headed where it needs to go. Again, I'm grateful. And um, I think there's a lot of credit that needs to go to her. So. As far as the game went, you know, independent of the way I feel <clears throat> right now, we expected to win that game. That's not shocking to me, you know. I was going to be emotional no matter what because it's a big win. And, you know, to capture that stadium <clears throat> and as we're kneeling the ball out, you know, um, just a, a picture in my mind of what the dream is. That is the dream. That's why I came here. It's what I came here to do. And there, there are days where you feel like you're really close. <clears throat> there are days where you feel like you're miles away. And to have that actualized for the moment, um, that was special. And um, something I'll never forget. <clears throat> now, we expected it. And um, I'm proud of our team, the way we battled. When you look at the game itself, um, we knew we needed to limit possessions. That's an explosive offense. It's a good Alabama team. I've got a ton of respect for Kalen. I thought his guys battled too. And um, I believe they had nine possessions. We said, you know, in the game, part of our big three was a 10, 10 possession game. So to, to get a nine possession game means that we met that mark. Um, that takes a team that's playing together. Um, that's all three phases interlocked, and um, proud of that. If you look at it, I think we had held the ball for 42 minutes. That's that's how you win games like that against good teams. Um, the second key was punch counter punch for us. You know, we knew they were going to get their plays. Uh, we needed to sync up at the right times. We we needed the next unit, no matter what had happened before, the next unit to step on the field and to dictate the energy on the field, and we did that. You know. Um, I thought the way we started the game, um, you know, um, defensively with the, the, the turnover for a touchdown, I thought moments where we delivered stops and got the ball back. And obviously for our offense to counter punch at the end and finish with possession is, man, that is that was a lot of fun. Um, so, um, you know, I felt like we delivered that way. And then special teams. Now, you know, there were a couple of things that we want back from special teams that, that return at the start of the half. I think even the, the you know, um, the kickoff, the squib kick there at the end, we want to puncture vertically on that one. But uh, on the whole, when you talk about the touchbacks on kickoff, huge. The pin punt that got them backed up, set up a good complementary sequence that we needed. That's what a win looks like. It's a team win. That's what our program is. And. We have everything we need here um, to, to replicate that. You know, um, We were a more disciplined team tonight. We cleaned up the penalties. I was proud of that. Hopefully, there's a great lesson for us to pull forward from that. And um, you know, we need to celebrate this and enjoy it and savor the moment. And then in 12 hours, we need to turn the page and focus on Kentucky. And that's what we'll do. Um, this isn't an arrival for our program. It's it's. It's a beginning in some ways. I do feel like this is a breakthrough moment for us, but it only matters 
It only matters in terms of the climb we're on and the journey if we turn and get right back into our process. So um, again, ob obviously you know how much this means to me. I love our university, I love our city, I love our program. This is why I came back. It's meant to be emotional uh, because again, I bled a lot into this and um, it's, it just feels great to, to be able to celebrate with the team that I love and care about. And um, I look forward to doing that. Uh, more in the future. So with that, I'm happy to open up for questions. The players, you know, work so hard year-round and have taken a lot of losses over the last three. How happy are you for them to get this? I'm really happy for them. I think, um, again, you know, we don't – we focus on our belief and – we understand that any time as a competitor, I mean, I think anymore, you know, the world is set up right now where you can you can avoid discomfort pretty easily. Um, and um, I don't take it for granted that I've got a team of warriors that um, keep their jaw set in adversity. I mean, you know, there's so many lessons to pull from this build. And I, I said it after Virginia Tech, and I said it tonight to the team, the guys that have been here, you know, this this their fourth year with me. You know, there's there's nothing I could say to thank them for uh, their level of belief and investment. You know, this is this is my job. It's my passion, but I'm also kind of hardwired. And this, you know, I love challenges and I love coming to work and I love the 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 task of having to find a way through. I think for young people to share that passion and love for the challenge, you know, it's it's inspirational. It's remarkable, and um, so. Yes, I'm happy for them, I'm happy for all of them. The guys that we added to this program, um, you know, I, I can't thank them enough for, again, their alignment with our environment, our culture, and, and with what Vanderbilt football is about. And um, I know they're hungry for more, too. So we're going to go back to work. Clark, I think the Gulf Coast is in its broad way now. <laughs> when you think back on what you gone through here, but also, but specifically the end of last season when everyone's leaving and you're making changes. How far away did this feel at that moment, and what is it you think allowed Vanderbilt to just go beat the number one team in the country? Um, I think I think in those moments, I mean, look, there were some <laughs> really hard days in December. Um, and it was this feeling of, you know, kind of evolve or die, you know, adapt or die. Like we had to, it's not just good enough to just copy and paste in the process. We had to really dig, dig in and, and say, what does this need to look like? And it started with, you know, our belief statement, which was a great eloquent, you know, <laughs> statement that we deleted and said, we're here to win. You know, we're here to win. And so we're going to measure everything, every decision, action, every dollar spent against what it takes to win. Um, and so that reframed some of those conversations that were really painful and really hard because they also represented opportunities for my growth, our program's growth. And it actually, the obstacle became the way. It became the path forward. And I didn't love it, you know. I mean, look, and I, I care about everybody in this program. And to, to have every time someone leaves, it's like a piece of me goes. And I think that's a beautiful part of it, too, because that piece is planted somewhere else, you know. And, and hopefully they take something from the experience. But um, there were days where it was left foot, right foot, breathe, stay focused on the long-term vision, and find the path through. And... What we learned in those moments, me, our staff, the support staff, I think of Barton, I think of Ben Cawthon, I think of Molly, I think of Earl Bennett, you know, locked in my office trying to find that. What we learned, we learned a lesson in resilience and resolve. And the belief and the vision can be challenged to the point where you can't even see it anymore. Are you willing to do the next right thing the right way? And so certainly um, it felt like a large gap to close and what we did is just focused on what the next thing was that we needed to do that included hiring tim back that included hiring jerry kill that included getting in the transfer portal that included candace opening up resources for us that included you know uh, retaining the team that we could retain and believing in them and by the time we got to january and i had a team i was ready to go and at that point it becomes let's have some fun building this thing and making it as good as we can make it um, 
and so that that captures a little bit of what that experience was like for me. And you know, again, I I, I look at a night like tonight, and I think um, you know, I'm really glad that I had a bunch of people around me that held held onto the rope. And I think what we're gonna it's inevitable that there's more adversity ahead, and. What we need to learn from that is that we continue to evolve, we continue to grow, we continue to push for more, and we continue to find ways to level up, and that's what we'll do. Clark, did the Missouri game help make this happen? You know, I, I don't know that I would say that. I think um, I, I, this team doesn't need an opponent and to measure themselves against an opponent to find confidence. They, they're confident, they're confident. There's a belief embedded and inherent in what we do. Um, I will say that as we've met disappointment, I mean, look, <laughs> you know, we stand here in celebration. A few weeks ago, you know, we were on the road really disappointed. We're capable of both, right? We can play really well and we can also play poorly. And, um, and, and so the lesson here is um, playing to an identity, playing to a strategy and continue to step into that belief. But the locker room after those disappointing losses has been totally different than it was in the first three years. And that, that's not a statement about, you know, there are so many people in those first three years that were on this team that are no longer here that bled and sweat and sacrificed and believed. But the challenge has been getting everyone to do that. And it only takes a few people to pull the soul of the program down. And so a lot of times after losses in the past, especially tight losses, it felt like, you know, just a, kind of a victim's mindset. And whether it's at Georgia State or whether it's at Missouri, that locker room, the, the tone, the courage, the challenge of each other, that has represented something totally different to me. And obviously they were, they were disappointed, but there was a resolve there. And so I don't think we needed Missouri to get to tonight. And I don't think we needed tonight to get to where we're going. Um, again, you talk about margins and look, I mean, we needed to win that one in regulation. I mean, they, they were building momentum offensively. You know, we needed that stop at the end. But had we, had, we, had we come back and we lost those margins and we came up just short, I still believe in where we're headed. So this is about, you know, celebrating a good result and, and, and switching gears and getting right back into process to go find some more. Mark, the, um, the clip of Nick Saban saying that Vanderbilt is the only place in the SEC that's not hard to play, were you aware of that clip before this week? No, and you know, shoot. I mean, look. I mean, I don't. It, that that doesn't affect me. It just I don't have a an opinion on that. I mean, I I love Coach. I mean, I've got so much respect for him, and I don't take any disrespect that way. What we need to do is is fill the stadium with black and gold shirts, and when we do that, it will be a hard place to play. Um, and it may not be the biggest, but it is on top of you, and it can get loud and. Um, I think this is a glimpse in what, uh, uh, as to what Saturday night in Nashville can be. So um, I didn't know. I, you know, I stay pretty well insulated in general, but um, I, that I don't. That doesn't have an effect on me. This could be a breakthrough for your program. Do you feel like there was a breakthrough moment in this game where the thought changes and the momentum changes? There were a lot of big plays, of course, but particularly in the second half, you know, the strip sack comes up. Was was there a player? Two that, that you think back of in this game? Um, I think the the sack was huge. Um, you know, that was a big moment. Um, the Cam Johnson's touchdown was huge. I mean, it, it, it's all of them, right? I mean, I, I don't know that you can, in, you know, single one out. I, I think in some ways this game was won in the first quarter, you know, when we were able to, to again, score a touchdown and get a, uh, a pick six. Um, but, um, what I think the breakthrough was in terms of the performance was we played a clean game and we played to our strategy. And I have talked about this, and I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk about it. I mean, that, this is all I've said is like, you know, game control offense, point limitation defense, special teams win field position, let's play penalty free, and let's win the turnover battle. And that's what we did. And so um, I, I think it validates that thought with internally. And so, now we take that and we copy and paste it and move it forward. We talked about earlier, Clark, about how, how instrumental it was in uh, opening up recently.
resources. And so, Candace, what does a win over a number one national team do, you hope, potentially, to further open up resources for this program? Well, I hope it does a lot. <laughs> you know, um, uh, look, I, I don't, I'm just, we keep working on who we are internally, and we let that manifest externally. And, um, and so what we're going to do is keep focusing on, you know, how we can build this program from within, bring the right people in, coach the right way, play the right way, connect with our community the right way, and deliver big moments and special memories. And I think people will start to pay attention. And, um, and that's my hope. But, um, you know, ultimately, a night like tonight hopefully moves the needle for some. Hopefully the next time we're at home, you know, you get a sense of what, what this can be in terms of Vanderbilt support for our program. And I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not bitter by that. I, I, I just, we have to play a certain way for people to take interest. You know, Nashville, the, one of the things that's great about this city is there is a lot going on. And we compete with all those things again, uh, to draw interest of the people that are in our community. And, and hopefully this team is starting to do things that create ripples where um, more people will pay attention. And certainly when more people start paying attention, I think I think everyone will realize that, you know, we're, we're, we're just continued growth of resources away from, from building something that, that really doesn't need to take a backseat to anybody. I think I, I'm on record as saying the best program in the country. That's what I'm after. And um, it's, it's cheap a little bit to bring that up right now, but that, that's what I said. And I think when I said it, no one really understood it, but the people that know me and know what we're doing here understood. You know, we're gonna keep doing the right things the right way. We're gonna keep evolving and growing. We need people to take interest and we need, we need the resources, but we can get it done here. And um, tonight was a special night for me. It was a special night for Canada, a special night for Vanderbilt, a special night for my team. Um, and uh, here's to having more of these nights. Changed your center. You moved Lasorda to guard. You moved uh, Castillo to center. Maybe the best your offensive line has played since you've been here. What what went into the game plan? What did you guys do differently to succeed? Well, I think it, look, I got to credit Coach K and Dylan Altenreath for what they the work they do with that front. I've said uh, just how impressed that um, I've been with. Chris Klonakis and um, his abilities as a coach. I mean, God, I, 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 um, I've learned a lot from watching him. You know, and and by the way, I mean, <laughs> as we were kneeling the ball out, uh, he had a gash on his forehead and blood was dripping everywhere. And I think that's what you want your O-line coach to look like. Um, his wife comes to practice. Um, you know, um, supports the players. I mean, she's there all the time. It was fun to have an embrace with her afterwards and just all that she's invested. That front, I'm really proud of the way we played, really in both lines of scrimmage tonight. And, and you can't talk about that with also not saying that, you know, I think we have the best strength coach in the country and the work that his staff has put in to make, this, make these moments possible. I mean, I felt like we physically were the more dominant team tonight, you know? That's a, that's a statement. You know, these, these guys played tough, and we made it hard. And they got some plays with their skill, and they were able to snuff out Diego a couple times, but, you know, we just kept throwing our punches. Um, as far as the changes go, it's about the best 11 on the field, and we got to keep searching for what that is. I thought, obviously, with the way we played, that was masterful. We, needed, we knew we needed a little more size at center. X has done a great job. He's a smart player. Um, he obviously played really well, uh, held up in there. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about our offensive line. And in this league, you got to win in the front. I mean, it's, it's just not going to happen unless you can win on the offensive line and defensive line. Um, I thought on both sides of the ball, we did that. I thought we limited their run game. We have to play better on the perimeter defensively. We will contest the space and keep the ball in front of us. And we can't grow tired of that. Um, offensively, I thought tonight we were opportunistic with our shots, and I'm really proud of Junior Cheryl for, you know, missing one on the sideline that I that I know he felt like he'd get, and coming back and getting a huge touchdown catch at the end. And so that that's what this is about. Um, but certainly a huge credit to the to the front, and um, 
I'm glad we have the coaches and the players that we have. I'm proud of them. Thanks, everybody. We're going to get the players in here. Thank you, guys. Questions for Diego? Diego, made a statement or some respect for what happened tonight. Um, I feel like just the outside is is shocked, but internally, you know, we we knew what we could do. Where we feel like any week that we focus on ourselves, Vanderbilt football can only be Vanderbilt football, and that's the reality of it. Um, but Vanderbilt or Alabama is a great team, and you know, we just played better you know, t tonight, and that's how the SEC is. It's any given Saturday. Um, you guys see it every single day, and so this is what it is. You mentioned after the end of the post game that Johnny Menzel sort of inspired you to maybe want to play in the SEC down the road in your career. You know, do, you, do you have any thoughts of the, the Johnny Menzel after, after this game and just <laughs> how, how he's inspired you throughout your career? Yeah, um, you know, Johnny football – you know, in his video, he says he's nothing to play with. I, f I feel the same way about myself. Just every time I, I step on the field, I feel like I'm the best player on the field um, every single time. But I just got to keep showing up. Um, it's God's timing. And so, you know, I just give everything to him. He, he allows me to play at my best. Um, you know, I, I, I feel no pressure because of him, and, and I don't worry. Throughout the week, you guys were obviously very confident. When people externally weren't, what gave you that confidence throughout the week? Uh, you know, belief within the team. Um, you know, nothing, nothing can stop. We, we don't got to worry about anything. Um, you know, it's just, God's our protector. I feel like a lot of the team is, is Christians and, um, you know, just, just that within itself, it brings the team together close. You know, we, we go to church and then go to breakfast and then we're in the office tomorrow and you guys you know it'll be the same thing tomorrow. What does it mean to have your whole family down on the field with you celebrating after the game? <laughs> yeah, um, it's amazing. You know, there's, I think the total number was 68 that all came out from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of money. A lot of people there um, aren't rich. Um, they, they come from uh, the poor, you know, South Valley. Um, that's where I'm homegrown. <clears throat> but, you know, I just super thankful for them. I feel like they were in my, in my corner tonight. Um, they're sitting right behind us, you know, just motivators, um, you know, allow me to be myself. And I feel like at home, like literally at home, just playing backyard football when I step out there. How are you guys able to the You go, you go back to the uh, thing that started in the spring, when we was, or not the spring, but the fall right before we went to camp. Coach Gay, Coach K, put out a formula for the O line. They showed up. Every single day, 6:15, hit the sled for an hour. Then went, then they went to lift, and then we went to practice. And it was just like, I showed up at, at 6:30. My lifts at 9:30, you know, just to, to do extra work, and they're already beating me. So I feel, I feel behind already. But you know, those guys, they they've earned this. Um, the game, I, like I said, and I'll say it again, they they win or lose games, and so they want it for us tonight. You know, I I owe them a lot. Because, um, you know, I, I'm the one who gets to sit in front of the camera, but really they, they're the ones who set the standard every single day. And, you know, those guys, uh, they deserve a lot. Diego, could you tell you think what this meant for, for the school, for the fans, for the guys on the team that have been here a while? To um, this? Coach Lee, and a lot of people don't understand, but Coach Lee has been trying to flip it for so long, and you can tell that he's hurt inside because no one has, has really – went behind him and they've been all the force. It's um, physics, you know, when everyone's when everyone's going the same way, there's a longer, you know, um, strand to, to go. And so like when, when he gets someone to push behind and I feel like that's the whole team, we're all around him, we're behind him and we're just, he, he leads the way and we just attack it, what he has uh, planned for us. And Coach Lee's a great coach. You guys see what he does at Notre Dame, you guys see what he does here. He just needs people to believe in him and to keep believing in him. You know, the SEC is, is tough. And that's this reality. You got to come every single week to play, or you will get your, like you will get beat. And that's just the reality. Where can this team go this season? Um, anywhere we want to. Um, Vanderbilt football can only beat Vanderbilt football, and so we just got to, you know, stay the course. Um, like Coach Lee said, we we got a Kentucky's nothing to play with, and they got good guys up front. You know, they're gonna beat. We're gonna have our hands full with those guys, and so we got to get. Uh, We'll watch some film tonight on them and then get back to it tomorrow. How much do you think you put on tape tonight, Diego, for the people who maybe didn't know until they see you guys knock off the number one and they say, who's that quarterback there? Oh, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I feel like, you know, a lot of things, they, they the new generation involves themselves around hype. And, you know, I, I don't believe in that. I feel like in New Mexico, it's, it's stay humble, stay the course. 
um, you know, believe what you believe in. And so tonight, you know, it just put my name out there more. But I've been doing this, um, I feel like, since since I was a little kid, really. Um, but I, the only thing I got to say is, you know, recruit, recruit New Mexico. And so um, those guys give everything they have. So just, you know, want to shout out them. Along those lines, you know, a lot of transfers that come in and out or whatever, they want to go to a place that they, I want, you know, to prove that I can do this. and. I want to come here to win ball games and stuff. But the fact that very, very few, I guess, like actually realize everything that they set out to do. How big a step is this for you in that process? It's a big step for uh, for sure. You know, a lot of us want to play in the NFL. This is my last year. Like this is I got. I don't know. Um, the next promised game that I have is against Kentucky. Who knows what will happen? Um, you know, it's God's timing. But you know, just to take it day by day, enjoy it give everything I got day by day, have the Kobe mentality, approach every single day like it's your last, and, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be just fine. Um, but my mom really instilled that in me. Um, you know, she's a single mother, um, has four kids, and she really just went to work every single day and showed us what, what it was. When you work hard, you get, you get rewarded in life. And so tonight's just a reward of how hard we worked. Man, I, I I can go on and on about Eli. Like, I have I have real genuine love for Eli. He's changed my life. Like, I, I mean, changed my life on how I live day by day. Um, you know, he he lives by the Bible. He's a real Christian man. When I say he lives out his faith by the book, he lives out his faith by the by the book. Um, I'm I'm trying to change and he's, he's training me on, on what's right, what's wrong. And I, I sit every day, he tells me when I'm right and wrong, but it's bigger than just the football field for Eli. Um, you know, that that's my guy. I will do anything literally for Eli. Um, I, I, I can't tell him how thankful I am for him coming over here to Vanderbilt with me from New Mexico State. Um, just that we have a, a special bond. He's my roommate. We kick it on the couch. We, you know, he, he loves my, my family too. Um, so he like he likes to let you know they, they make him laugh and um, he's telling them they're they're not living right and things like that. But he's 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 a good kid. Um, he's a he's the top tight end in the NFL draft this year. Um, he sh he should be going first round if you guys really go look at the film and what he does. Um, the most unguardable piece, you know, in in the country. So um, shout out him and I'm ver I'm very thankful for him being here. Floating in the Cumberland River. I don't know if you knew that. Um, <laughs> how does that make you feel? And how excited are you to, to, to maybe go see it if I, it's still there? I, I love Vandy. This is what I came here for. Came here to win um, big football games. Came here to, you know, our, our ultimate goal is to, to go to the college football playoff. And so we want a chance at the national championship, just how everyone else does. Um, this is just a, a step in the way. And um, we just got to keep getting better. There's still little mistakes out there that we got to clean up. Um, but, you know, any given Saturday, anything's possible. You guys established the, the tone, first drive, long drive, kept the ball, got pushed on the offensive line. People don't do that to Alabama generally. Was that, was, was that a sign that you guys maybe had something? Because it felt like it never went away. <laughs> uh, to be honest, on Tuesday, Big Glow walked in and said, some people were talking to him. He said, if it ain't about beating Bama, get the fuck out the way. I ain't, I ain't trying to talk to you right now. And that was just how every single, like, every single lineman got behind and just had the same mentality. And that's just, if it ain't beating Bama, get out the way. And that's just, he, he told me once or twice, I was trying to, you know, joke with him. He's like, man, if it ain't beating Bama, get the F out the way. And I was just like, she, I'm gonna step out the way. You know what I mean? Because I was, I was joking. But that mentality that Big, big Glow brings is, is real. Um, he has a whole line on it. Coach Case has a mentality. If you mess up a little bit in practice, take the wrong step, your hand placement's off. You know, they're gonna call you out on it. But you know, just those guys set the standard, like I said. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm full, I'm fully with it. Anything else, guys? Appreciate you guys. God bless you guys. Yep. Good. Everyone else good recording? Questions for Miles? Miles, given, given you know, you had, you were, it looked like you were going to be a breakout star before you tore your ACL in practice a couple of years ago, and, and now you're here forcing a sack that helps win the game against Alabama. I mean, uh, given all that, how are you feeling right now in terms of how far you've come? 
I'm still blacked out for real. It's like, it's like it's crazy to think about all the stuff that happened to get to this moment. Um, I mean, I, when, um, damn, when, um, that that night, uh, Coach D took the job here. He called me and I told him uh, who was gonna beat Bama. My time here now. It happened today. Um, I still don't know what to say because like I'm still thinking about what happened on the field, but it's crazy. When you sacked Miller, did you know the ball came loose? Yeah, I, I tried to get it up. I, I seen it and I said, forget it, take it. That's how we gotta do it. How happy were you for uh, Issa just to be the one to recover that? Bro, Issa, like we was talking for the play, like he said, it's the time right now, so. It's like my motivation, like me and him, like we like tight. And um, I'll do anything for Issa, and he'll do anything for me. And, like this is the true brotherhood we got here. Um, that's really what all the players like. We'll do anything for each other. Like from the kickers, the punters, the D line, like we don't care. Like we got each other back. They only ran for four yards per carry. How were you guys on the D line? Uh, just playing our techniques and going through what we did in practice and using our strengths and playing together for real. That's how we really stopped the run. How are you guys celebrating tonight? Oh, you know, I might be sleep. I don't know how I'm feeling right now. You guys obviously had a lot of belief going into the week that people externally didn't have in you guys. What did you attribute that to? Why, did you, why are you guys so confident throughout the week? I think it's just what we did in the offseason that built the confidence. Uh, we knew this was going to happen. We just took the step forward and fought back instead of, you know, back down. You were able to kind of take the quarterback run game away from Alabama. You know, how, how did you kind of do that today? Oh, uh, this really goes to uh, um, practice, practicing. You know, we had to cage him, keep him uncomfortable. Um, we knew. Uh, He's dangerous with his legs, and we just had to do our jobs to get the job done. Anything else? Is it still sunk in that you guys knocked out the number one team in the country? I'm still thinking about it right now. <laughs> What's, I mean, what, what is that? I mean, I just talked to Anthony, man. He, he, he real happy for right now. So it's people like him like that that motivate me to come here every day and like do stuff like this. That really pushed me. Appreciate it.